Today's topic is a very common evidence for evolution in older textbooks, which was the famous horse evolution series. It showed a diagram tracing a tiny, supposed 50 million year old four toed horse called Eohippus through a series of supposed ever evolving creatures to Equus, the single toed horse of today. Now, rather than beat a dead horse, pun intended, right off the bat and explain the many details as to why this so called evidence is hogwash rather than horse sense, let me quote the esteemed evolutionist and curator at the American Museum of Natural History, Dr. Niles Elridge, who said the following I admit that an awful lot of that has gotten into the textbooks as though it were true. For instance, the most famous example, still on exhibit downstairs in the American Museum, is the exhibit on horse evolution prepared perhaps 50 years ago. That has been presented as literal truth in textbook after textbook. Now I think that that is lamentable, particularly because the people who propose these kinds of stories themselves may be aware of the speculative nature of some of the stuff. Now, why would an evolutionary scientist make such a statement? Well, here are the facts, admitted by evolutionists. In 1841, the earliest so-called horse fossil was discovered in clay around London. The scientist who unearthed it, Richard Owen, found a complete skull that looked like a small fox's head with multiple back teeth as in hoofed animals. And he called it Hyracotherium because he viewed it as a relative of the Hyrax or Dassey. He saw no connection between it and the modern day horse. In 1874, another scientist, Kovalevsky, attempted to establish a link between this small fox like creature, which he thought was 70 million years old, and the modern horse. So in 1879, an American fossil expert, O.C. Marsh, and famous evolutionist Thomas Huxley collaborated for a public lecture which Huxley gave in New York. And Marsh produced a schematic diagram which attempted to show the so called development of the front and back feet, the legs, and the teeth of the various stages of the horse. And he published his evolutionary diagram in the American Journal of Science in 1879. And it found its way into many other publications and textbooks. And this scheme hasn't changed. It shows a beautiful graduational sequence in the evolution of the horse, unbroken by any abrupt changes. And this is what we see in school textbooks. However, while it's a clever arrangement of the fossils on an evolutionary assumption, even leading evolutionists such as George Gaylord Simpson said it was misleading. Why? Well, if it were true, you would expect to find the earliest horse fossils in the lowest rock strata, but you don't. In fact, bones of the supposed earliest horses have been found at or near the surface. Sometimes they're found right next to modern horse fossils. O.C. Marsh commented on living horses with multiple toes and said there were cases in the American Southwest where both fore and hind feet may each have two extra digits fairly developed and all of nearly equal size, thus corresponding to the feet of the extinct Protohippus. In National Geographic in 1981, there's a picture of the foot of the so-called early horse, Pleohippus, and one of the modern equus that were found at the same volcanic site in Nebraska. And the writer says this, dozens of hoof species lived on the American plains. Well, doesn't this suggest two different species rather than the evolutionary progression of one? There's no one site in the world where the evolutionary succession of the horse can be seen. Rather, the fossil fragments have been gathered from several different continents on the assumption of evolutionary progress and then used to support the assumption. And this is circular reasoning. It doesn't qualify as objective science. Finally, when evolutionists assume that the horse has grown progressively in size over millions of years, what they forget is that modern horses vary enormously in size. The largest horse today, of course, is the Clydesdale, and the smallest is the Falabella, which stands at 43 centimeters, that's 17 inches tall. And both are members of the exact same species, and neither has evolved from the other. So is the fossil horse series legitimate? No. And yet science textbooks continue to use the horse as a prime example of evolution, even when the whole schema is demonstrably false.